Assalamu alaikum, I am Asma Mushtaq from the WE Vibes and in this video lecture we are going to study about the designs types of the combinational logic circuits design and we know that the combinational logic circuits are the circuits that are designed using the logic gates and in the combinational logic circuits we have the certain number of the inputs and the certain number of the outputs alright while in between them obviously there must be some logic gates involved fine the combinational logic circuits are actually used for implementing the particular function behavior all right so we will do an example later on that will obviously elaborate more clearly so let's just understand what are the design steps involved for designing the combinational logic circuits the first step is to determine the number of the inputs and the outputs involved in the functional behavior all right so you have to determine number of inputs and outputs all right the next step is what you have to correlate or map how the output is actually related to the input so mapping of input with the outputs and how is it possible you have to construct the truth table for that so make the truth table from the correlation between the inputs and the outputs okay third step is what once you are having the truth table the next step is to drive the boolean function expression from the k map okay so this is the third step you will determine or simplify the boolean function using the truth table all right the last step is to implement the boolean function or design the boolean function using logic gates so these are the main four steps involved for designing any combinational logic circuitry all right so let's just consider an example uh, i'll draw a room so there is a big room fine this room has a single bulb whose light is actually controlled with the three switches that are placed outside the three doors of this room all right so let me call the light bulb as the output while the three switches outside of each room are named as switch one switch two or switch three or you can also name them the as the variable names like x1 x2 and x3 all right so according to this statement these three switches are actually controlling the output of this bulb which is denoted by y in this case fine so the bulb is off as long as all the switches are off and it will be turned on if any of the switches turned on at a time so if x1 is on while both the switches are off then output or the bulb is turned on similarly if x1 is 0 while x2 is 1 then again you will have the output equal to 1 or if x1 x2 both are 0 while x3 is equal to 1 then output is equal to 1 or the bulb is turned on but if you keep one switch on and then turn on another switch then what will happen this bulb will be turned off and same is the case for rest of the two switches so if two switches are turned on at a time output is 0 now in order to make 
or turn on the bulb on again when two switches are turned on what you have to do you have to turn on the third switch as well so that this bulb will be on so let's just draw a proper truth table from here but before that you can see that on three input variables are here and one output variable is here so the second step is to draw the k map after determining the number of the inputs and the outputs okay so here x1 x2 and x3 are the input variables while y is the output okay so three variable truth table will be formed 0 0 0 0 0 1 then 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 and finally you will have 1 1 and 1 all right now let's just map the behavior of this function so bulb is off when all, all switches are off if any of the switches turned on output is 1 or bulb is turned on then again it's equal to 1 it's equal to 0 then 1 then 0 then 0 and finally you will have 1 over here okay after constructing the truth table the next step is to draw the k map and we will have a three variable k map in this case Here we will have x1 while x2 and x3 are written over here. So x1 can be 0 or 1 while x2, x3 can be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Fine. The next step is to place the min terms. Okay. So placing the min terms is such that this represents the min term 0. Then this is 1. Then this is 2, 3, 4. 5 6 and 7 since 0th min term is 0 while 1 min term is equal to 1 similarly third uh, second min term is also equal to 1 then fourth min term is equal to 1 and finally the seventh min term is equal to 1 so after placing these min terms we will write the function which is the function of x1 x2 and x3 as when you will write down the first min term since x1 is 0, so it will be written as the complemented input. Then x2 is also 0, so x2 complement while x3 is equal to 1. So we will not write the prime over it. Fine. Then plus, let's write down the second min term. Since none of these min terms can be combined together, that's why I am just writing the min term expressions over here. Otherwise, we will have the simplified version of it. Fine. So the next term will become x1 complement while x2, x3 complement. Fine. Then plus x1, x2 complement, x3 complement. While the last min term is x1, x2 and x3. So far we are done. If you are just having the ICs of the AND gates, NOT gates and OR gates, you can use this Boolean function expression to implement the combinational logic circuitry which will be ultimately giving you the desired results all right but if you want to simplify it further what you can do you can actually write down the terms in and rearrange them like x1 complement x2 and x3 complement so i have written this term first then plus x1 x2 and x3 then plus x1 complement x2 complement while x3 then plus x1 x2 complement and then x3 complement okay and from here what you can do you can actually take x2 common from this expression so within the bracket you will have x1 complement x3 complement plus x1 x3 then plus while what you can get common from this expression you can get x2 complement from here and then you will have x1 complement x3 plus x1 x3 complement so within the bracket you are left with that all right so if you remember that we know that the expression of the xor gate a xor b is equal to a complement b plus a b complement and the expression of the x nor gate is equal to a complement b complement plus a into b fine 
so if you look closely so this expression actually matches with the definition of the x nor gate so we can write it as x2 as it is while this is the x1 and x3 x nor okay then plus x2 complement and here this is the this expression matches with the definition of x1 x3 xor all right now what is happening first term as it is complement of the second term then second first term complemented while the second term comes as it is so this is actually the x2 xor with x1 xor and x3 all right so this is basically the final expression for implementing this function and if you are having the three input xor gate or what you can do even with the two input xor gates you can actually take the xor of x1 and x3 and then you can further take its xor with the second input which is x2 in this case for resulting the output function y if you have some question you can drop the your question in the comment section please don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching